interesting uh, product. We have clients that are, are using uh, the, the SQL mirroring from DSD. Uh, it's a great solution when you're in a situation where there's an internal requirement to use SQL tables. Uh, the setup on it is really a snap. Uh, very, very surprising how, how easy it was to get it set up and configured. Uh, and DSD helped us you know, through the whole thing. It was literally a couple hours to, to get the whole thing loaded on there. And it, it pretty much works exactly you know, as John there has described. Uh, next, up next is Mark Chinsky. He is going to give us a demonstration on the job ops manufacturing and field service dispatch. Job ops is I think calling it an add-on would be a disservice. It's really additional modules that work within MASS 90 and MASS 200. And these are modules that people tend to use when they have more advanced manufacturing requirements than what may fit right within MASS 90. And I've always started to look at job ops when I've seen that a client of mine said, geez, we'd really like to either you know, start this whole thing off from a sales order and move right over to a work order or we just have a lot more extensive requirements. And I will let uh, Mark go through and give you his presentation now. Okay, Wayne. My name is Mark Chinsky with Clients First Business Solutions, and uh, again, everybody, welcome, uh, especially for those that um, are clients of Clients First as well as all others. What we're going to talk about now, and it's a very high level, I could spend hours uh, just getting into the details, it's a whet your appetite, um, first look as we call it, of the job ops or job operations and production system from Synergistic Software, which is a uh, division of DDO Seedman, the uh, very large uh, national accounting firm. Um, <clears throat> so taking a look at that, just to give you an idea who the target market of job ops is, it's typically companies that are custom manufacturers. Some people call them job shops, assemble to order, or custom products. Also, it handles people that deal with production and even project management situations, such as billable consultants, or uh, printers, or design firms, packages, packagers, decorators. Okay, so basically, as I said, um, it basically applies to custom manufacturers, people that assemble to order, engineer to order, design to order. If you um, project what you think you're going to sell, manufacture it, put it on the shelf and hope you sell it, this is not the product for you. That is what the standard Mass 90 work order and, and uh, bill of materials module is for. This is for those that wait to get an order and either produce to that demand or customize to that demand. In addition, about a year and a half ago, they introduced an additional module to job ops called Field Service and Dispatch, which allows companies who make things, such as, let's say, trade show booths, to now go out and do the on-site installation and or ongoing service support and maintenance and dispatch technicians and uh, installers and be able to track that. And they have recently um, separated it as a product or SKU from the base job ops in such a way that if all you need is an ability to dispatch technicians for customer service, but you don't need the manufacturing components. You can buy that standalone as well, and is a, uh, it's a very good solution from a vendor who's got one of the best reputations in the uh, Mass 90 community in terms of customer support and uh, ongoing stability. Um, kind of requirements, as I mentioned, you have is either you're make to order. We can handle make to stock. So if half the items you do are made to order and half are make to stock, we still have uh, capacity to handle that situation. Um, key thing is we can purchase materials that are uniquely purchased to an individual job and linked to that job, not being purchased to inventory and being transferred to the job. It also includes uh, much more extensive functionality, which we'll get into, including um, visual scheduling, finite capacity scheduling, which standard Mass 90 work order doesn't handle, uh, and handles the ability to do shop floor labor tracking, be able to capture time from employees in production, uh, both directly and over the web, etc. To 
give you an idea of all the different modules that JobOps touches, it's extremely comprehensive. It communicates with bill of materials and payroll, and the general ledger, sales order, accounts receivable, inventory, purchasing, accounts payable. All of these MASK90 modules touch job ops in different ways. For example, you can get a direct expense or send a product out to somebody to do some work on one of your components and that bill comes in directly as an AP invoice and that can be linked to the job. Or job ops can automatically generate purchase orders for components you need to the job. Um, general ledger entries can be linked to a job, etc. So it's very, very um, well integrated in anywhere that you would need it. It handles those scenarios um, comprehensively give you an idea of the workflow, you typically would have um, an estimate that turns into a quote, and a quote then typically turns into a sales order. Now the key difference in job ops from standard Mass 90 or standard make to stock systems is that the quote, or rather that the work ticket, and some people call work order, is actually living and linked to the line on the sales order. In standard Mass 90, your you create your sales order, then you go into the work order module, and you manually link a work order to a sales order line if you want to relate the two. In job ops, while you're in sales order, the system automatically creates the related work order for that line, and thus you can see profitability not just by work order or work ticket, but profitability for a sales order, because a customer can buy five or six or a hundred items from you, each one requiring their own manufacturing work ticket, and roll it up and show you overall profitability. And then it will issue the necessary purchase orders as needed and schedule the jobs automatically. Give you an idea of the difference between job ops, the standard Mass 90 job cost, and the standard Mass 90 work order, because many people ask this question, is if you took the best of job cost and the best of work order and merged them together, in essence, that's what job ops is. Mass90's job cost is better suited for people that are building buildings in the typical construction industry phase task uh, mode. Work order is typically for simple manufacturers that do make to stock. They don't do shop floor tracking. They, do, they don't do scheduling or planning. They don't do uh, any type of real-time processing. And job ops basically gives you the job cost and work order together with significantly enhanced functionality. Also just want to mention job ops is extending a special to those here on the webinar who do fill out the feedback form at the end. Any new purchase of job ops software placed before September 12th gets 30% off, which is not a small um, piece of change. So if you have been considering something like this, now would be the time to uh, really take a look. So what we're looking at now is my Mass 90 desktop. And as you can see, it looks pretty much like uh, a typical Mass 90 4.1 installation, actually, or 4.2. I forget which I'm running here, but it is available up to 4.2 currently, 4.3. Usually, um, job ops releases a compatible version within 4 to 12 weeks of a Sage release, depending on how much has changed. And you really only notice one additional module here on the menu here called job ops, which has all the job ops functions. Um, for the purposes of simplicity, I've gone and created a My Tasks menu, which is a standard Mass 90 function, to go ahead and work through our workflow here without you seeing me going around from um, uh, all throughout the Mass 90 menus. So let's go ahead and start with a simple sales order. And I'm just going to go ahead and create a new sales order. I'm going to pick a customer. I'll just pick the uh, first one here. Uh, work ticket class just says what kind of work ticket are you, are you using here. Again, for time's sake, we're going to fly through these. And now the typical lines, what is it that we want to buy? And I can use my pick list or type it. And we have a particular item here called servers that's associated with what's called our configurator, which is a module. And the customer will keep it simple as ordering one. And as soon as you come off the line, it knows that this item is associated with the configurator. And what pops up automatically is the job ops configurator, which is completely customizable by us or the end user with training. That is, it basically takes you through a series of rules and lets you configure items. This particular example is a computer configuration. We have examples of cable configuration or uh, manufacturing doors or anything else in which your items are typically picked up from um, a unique set of um, a fairly predictable tabbing of questions. It can automatically build your work ticket and your bill of materials dynamically. So for this example, we'll pick the Model 300 server. You can associate an image with any choice, as you can see. And does this need additional memory? 
Um, it says see help note. You can create a customized help note that tells you anything special that your order rancher or your salesperson should know about this particular choice. If I say yes, the next question is, is how much extra memory? Don't laugh at some of the numbers. This just goes to show you dated sample data. And you're allowed to either add one or two memory cards. Had I picked a different model computer, I might have been able to add four memory cards. If I go back a step and I tell it no, I don't want to add any additional memory, it won't even ask me for the additional memory or how many. So let's just go back and say, yes, we want memory, 256K, two of them. And we'll say next. Do we need an additional hard disk? If we check on yes, then the next question is, is which hard disk? And this is a custom filter of all your items that are only available that are considered hard disks. So we'll order our 50 terabyte mega store. Click next. Do we want to add any optional software? Sure. What might we want? We might want Microsoft Office. Next. And we're all done. If we say generate work ticket, the system will dynamically create a work ticket for this item. And normally you don't have to edit it, but just so that you can see what a work ticket is. A work ticket, again, is similar if any of you are familiar to a uh, Mass 90 work order. And it is made up of a series of steps. And the first step, first step 10, is really getting all the parts together. And all of these parts in the work ticket are based on the results of the question asked. Remember we asked for the memory, so we said we needed two by two, and thus we get four of these memories uh, included because it includes two and then we add an additional two. That kind of logic can occur, adding or removing items and what have you. We also have a summary here which shows us for this step we protect 4.75 hours of labor. If I needed to build two of these, that would have been nine hours of labor, for example. The average of labor, um, uh, the, the value of that labor based on an implied uh, cost per hour and what the total of all those materials are. So this is what the projected costs of this step are, which is just the first step, which is called configure components. If I go to the next step, that's when we install the operating system. And that requires the addition of, again, some made up data here, the OS3 operating system. And it requires six hours to install and test that. The next step is to install the miscellaneous software, which in this case included the Microsoft Office, including what we pay for it and including the necessary um, hours it takes to install it, test it, etc. So you can see it takes you through the various steps. Your items can be as simple as uh, a one-step manufacturing process or any. Here's the shipping and packaging step in which we use a shipping carton. Notice this carton is a miscellaneous item code, so we don't have to track inventory of the item at all. It's, it's strictly used for costing purposes. So not everything in the system has to be an inventory item. And your finished good can actually be a miscellaneous item, which is made up of many custom items. So we'll go ahead and accept this as is. Also, the way this work ticket is set up, certain items are considered additional charges. So the customer knows getting a server, and the system builds an intelligent smart part number. But they're also seeing on their invoice that they're getting these three items. It's not embedded into the actual server itself. You can choose whether the cost is embedded or whether it shows as a separate line. So we'll go ahead and accept that order. And that order, in essence, has also created our work ticket. Now, one of the other features of JobOps is something called the Component Exception Manager. And what this does is it automatically creates additional work tickets for sub-assemblies or creates purchase orders for parts that you may need that you may not have on hand. So you can say, do it for everything I have together and do a consolidated buy. But for simplicity, I'm just going to pick the work ticket we just entered. And now if we look at the items it thinks we need, it thinks we need this network card. Normally, we buy it from United at $186 a, a card. And this is a resizable window. If I could grab the edge. And it thinks we need to buy one. But you know what? First of all, I know that there are a special over at All Climate Maintenance. Uh, I know I can get it for $150 there. And I want to buy 10 at a time instead of just one. And this will show you a list of all items that you need to buy, all items that are part of it. If I want to go ahead and uh, also throw in you know, two of these cabinets from uh, a different uh, vendor or what have you. Now, because I added those, these are all the items we need to buy. And I go ahead and say, Create Purchase Orders. And we'll just say create new ones for um, simplicity. And the system has gone out and created the necessary purchase orders for this. 
So if I were to jump over to the purchase order module and look at my created purchase orders, the system has created two purchase orders. One for the network card, which I said we needed 10 of these. And it also created a purchase order for the cabinet, which I said we needed two. This alone is a feature that's worth a lot to people who want to integrate sales over purchase orders um, around a project. Again, such as interior decorators or what have you. Okay, once we have that, now we can go ahead and post some time to this. Maybe this work ticket is out in the shop, and we want to go ahead and put time on the work ticket. And you can have it set up as a kiosk in the shop where multiple employees share a computer. You can use a barcode reader. It could be done administratively after the fact or what have you. Um, we'll just go ahead and do a simple single employee entry for time purposes. I'm going to say I'm Arthur Shaw. What's the work ticket I'm working on, which should be towards the bottom of the list here. And you notice the work ticket is actually shown by step because somebody could be working on the, the software installation and somebody else on putting the motherboard together. So I'll go ahead and work on the motherboard, and I can either do a start and stop time, which means I punch in, and then when I come back to the console, I punch out. Or I can just go ahead and say, you know, one, and uh, flag it as one hour. Work performed, installed components to motherboard. I can also optionally indicate whether this step is complete. By doing this, a manager can look at an overview of the tickets and see where all of the um, production is in real time. I can also manually assign parts in real time to this that are supposed to be needed on the job. Um, or I can go ahead and um, allow the system to auto issue. All parts usage can be set up to be real time. There's transaction reports and journals and registers. All of this is real time, which is quite different from standard Mass 90 in this, uh, for the sake of change. OK? So we'll go ahead and say OK. Now this time has been real time recorded. If we were to go back into the work ticket, you would see that the time we entered and the parts we entered are now there. Uh, for example, we'll just do that real quickly. Go into this particular sales order we created. Go to this line and look at the work ticket associated with the line. And look at the part step. And you'll notice under the quantity used column, um, well, I haven't flagged those yet, but under the uh, labor column, you'll see Arthur's one hour that was already put in to the project in real time. So that time is actually captured in real time. Okay. okay. Another comp uh, key part of the system is the Job Ops Scheduling and Control Hub, which is nicely known as Josh for short. And what Josh basically does, and um, where's my on a moment. Just have a different resolution here uh, because of the change we just made. Basically, what Josh does is it shows you the scheduling board, all of your work gets, and as you click on them, you can literally drag and drop them between different work centers, different people, and different dates, and the system can automatically load these work centers as appropriate to when they're needed. So each of, these each of these are related, and they relate to a particular work ticket. Again, this is a very high level overview, so I won't get into the details. You can do what ifs. Go ahead and create a copy of the board, rearrange your schedule, and see what it does, and then undo it if you didn't like the changes. You can also drill back on any work ticket and see all of the details, the related sales orders, the related time entries, et cetera. So it's very, very robust in that um, functionality. One of the other key functions we talked about, and this may have a tough time squeezing on the screen here, is our service and dispatch board. And this is typically where you've gone and you've sold something, you've installed it, and the customer has a problem with it. We'll go ahead and say we got a phone call from the customer, and we can pick the customer, let's say all tech office systems, and now we can pick either any item number or all items that they bought from us based on their manufacturer's serial number. So we'll go ahead and, for example, pick this server that we had sold them. What's the nature of the problem? These are user-definable um, problems, the kind of resolution that we had. We could look at the details of this piece of equipment, when the warranties are. The system fully has the ability to track maintenance contracts, um, preventative maintenance contracts, 
time only contracts, parts and labor contracts, renewals for those contracts, properly recognizes the revenue of those contracts by spreading the, the uh, revenue and costs or the revenue of the contract over the year, etc. But we'll keep it simple. And now we've gone ahead and created a new um, item that still needs to be dispatched. So we can right click on it um, and scroll down here so it fits on our screen and say schedule. And now we just drag, I want to give this to Robert Hadley and it's on Robert's schedule. This can automatically be set up to email to Robert's cell phone or PDA all the information necessary for this particular service call. Okay. Now, after the service call is complete, we have the ability to do billing against that service call. So, for example, if um, Robert Hadley came in and needed to um, bill that service ticket that was just created, here are the items on the ticket. Uh, actually, that was the uh, wrong one. Excuse me. Actually, that was the correct one. And then you can go ahead and add expenses, add parts, add labor, and what have you. Uh, expense, for example, could be mileage. And he drove 50 miles. I could type. And these days, that's probably 90 cents a mile. And does the employee get reimbursed? All of this stuff is adjustable. And we can go ahead and process any direct charges, exit, and now um, go ahead and update an invoice. And the system will automatically now create a mass 90 sales order invoice for any additional expenses that we have here. Just accept it. And uh, we'll just post that invoice so that you can see the expense show up. Standard mass 90 invoice posting. Okay, now if we were to go ahead into our asset maintenance and look at that particular server that we sold them, which is this um, custom server, just find it here. we can see all of the transactions that have gone against that server. This is the original sale, the invoice information. You can click the history button to go back to the original Mass90 invoice, see the sale, and from that invoice you can actually go back and see the work ticket and see the unique bill of materials that might have been used because we can accept the bill that the system recommends and make an engineering change on the fly because we didn't have the 16 speed so we could have used the 32 speed and you'd actually be able to get back to that and know the unique items as well as potentially unique serial numbers. And then these are the three service calls that have been uh, executed against that particular item over the years. And again, you can double click and drill down and see the details of the invoice for that service call which in this case was the auto expenses. So all of this, you have an item that you sell, including the transfer from one customer to another. So if you sell big items that a customer like trucks might sell to another customer, you can keep track of the history. In addition, you can see all of the related components. This server, which has this serial number, has this hard drive in it, which has this serial number and this warranty. So you may have separate warranties and serial numbers on components in it, and you can see that also sold them a laser printer with a quick fix-it kit. And if I wanted to look at the details of this hard drive, I can switch the item. Now I'm looking at all the details of the hard drive. So you can see all of the rated items or hierarchies of an item, or you can jump back to the parent item as well. You can also see um, any parts that you would normally use for that item, but we really should go back to the parent item first so you can see that. Okay, and these are the typical parts that somebody should have on their truck if something goes wrong. And again, this is user definable. Okay. You can also see that they have a service agreement, which is really just time and materials at a fixed $50 per call. We figure it would take two hours, two and a half hours. You can do that kind. You can do total time and materials coverage. You can say materials are chargeable, but time isn't, or vice versa. And in a quick nutshell, that essentially is um, job ops. Again, we can spend hours on it, but that's a very high-level overview of the ability to go from an order, a quote, to an order, to a work ticket, to post posting time against the work, posting parts against the work, and then to be able to service the product that you sell after the fact. Or, as I mentioned earlier, you can just buy the dispatch functionality 
if that's all that your business needs out of it for now. Thanks, and I'm now going to hand it over to Wayne. Okay, thanks, Mark. Um, you know, one of the, the, the nice things about the, the people that are presenting here today, and I'll let you in on a little secret, is they don't only know sort of their product that they're representing, in that if you have a question after these types of sessions, and I do this with all of them all the time, each person that's here that is presenting, if you have a question after the fact and you need to call and say, you know what, I'm not really sure whether my situation fits or, um, you know, is this really a good deal for me? Everyone here that is presenting and the reason that I ask them to present, they're the type of people in my dealings with them in the past where they've been more than willing to stand up and say, you know what, Wayne, this really doesn't fit into your client and here's why. They, they really understand the different aspects of the program so they're able to go and think outside of the box versus just being some type of a salesperson that just knows one specific product and has no idea what else may be out there or in the real world what people commonly you know, run into and, and things that you may have to, to deal with. So keep that in mind as uh, you listen to each of these presentations. Um, up next is Hannah Lim from Sage Software. She has been at Sage Software I think forever. I've, she's been there for as long as I've been doing Math 90 and I've been doing it since uh, way back uh, 1986. Uh, she works specifically with the extended solutions. So she is a great person to ask, you know, will this extended solution particularly work for me? Um, do you have a solution that will work? And I've asked her whether she would be able to give us a presentation on the new feature that is in, included in everybody's um, version 4.3 upgrade. And that's 